Welcome to Webinar Wednesday as we have today's topic of tallow and how you can use this in both your classroom and the Business Achievement Awards. At any time during this broadcast, we encourage you to ask questions using the chat function. This broadcast is also being recorded and will be available on our website at www.fbla-pbl.org. You can just go to the home page. So let's take a look at today's agenda for this session. We'll go over introductions. We'll talk about information and background on Tello, how you can create your online profile, the benefits to creating an online profile via Tallo, digital badges, and there's quite a few of them that are available to FBLA PBL members, and Tallo within the FBLA PBL membership programs. So my name is Lisa Smothers, and I'm the membership director here at the National Center. I've been here about 10 years. Prior to that, I was a business education instructor and FBLA advisor in the state of Wisconsin. I'd like to take a moment to introduce our guest speaker before we kind of get into the meat of things. Our guest speaker is Chanel Raglan Refuge. She comes to Tallow from Project Lead the Way, where she served as Director of Student Relations and Chief of Staff. Chanel has leadership experience in youth program development and outreach, fundraising, and executive management. Throughout her career, she has worked to provide underrepresented students access to a college education and expose youth to academic and professional opportunities. Chanel is a graduate of Indiana University Southwest with a Bachelor of Arts in Sociology and Master of Social Work from the University of Southern Indiana. She also studied education, leadership, and administration through Brown University and Evansville Vanderbilt School Corporation's Leadership Learning Cadre. So before we get to her, I want to talk a little bit about digital badges that are available, as I said. We have quite a few. Now, Tallow is aligned with all of our membership programs, whether it's middle level, high school, which is FBLA, or college, which is PBL. So over on the left, you'll see in yellow, the middle level membership badge. So just for being a member, you can get a badge on your digital online profile. Um, if you're elected young leader in every state can elect one as a representative, you can claim that badge. You can also claim new this year a stock market badge if you're participating in the stock market game and a national competitor badge. And so these are not strictly aligned with the program of middle level map, map or lead or BAA, but you can get them even without going to the program because I wanted you to be aware that there's other options as well. For the high school level in blue, you have the options of a state officer digital badge, a national competitor, a member, a stock market game, which again is new this year, and also new this year, in order, in addition to the online certificates you get for participating in Membership Madness and Membership Mania, you can also claim two digital badges. And at the collegiate level, you have a national competitor badge, a state officer badge, a member badge, and again, the new stock market game badge. So these badges are available to any of our members. Also, if you actually go through our integrated program, you have the option to do the BAA, the lead for middle level, and CMAP for MAP. And in addition to earning the pins, you also earn a digital badge at each level. So the goal of each of these three programs is to really use Tallow to create an online digital profile that really, if you start at the middle level, it follows you all the way through high school, in college. So at the high school level, why is, it, why is it important? It's important as you apply to colleges and apply for scholarships because you can share your online profile. And when Chanel gets in and shows you this, she'll have you take a look at how to do that. And you can share that with your mentor. At the collegiate level, it's really important for a job interview because you know it's not just about the resume anymore. A lot more people are looking at your online leadership profiles. The great thing about Tallow is you can also export it into um, a PDF, which almost looks like a resume. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Chanel, who's going to take it away. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lisa. I appreciate the introduction. 
I want to welcome everyone um, who is participating today, and thank you all um, for your interest in, um, in learning a little bit more about Palo today. So um, what we're going to do today is I'm going to tell you a little bit of background about who Palo is, um, or what Palo is, and then we'll talk about some of the benefits, and then we're going to spend a little bit of time just going in and viewing a profile, letting you all know where you get started, what the benefits are um, as a student, but then also for those of you who are advisors that may mentor and work with students, we're also going to make sure that you have the information that you need so that you understand how the platform works on behalf of the student and then how you can also have the um, ability to view their profiles as well. So just to get us started on just what is Tallow, I'm going to give you the short version of what Tallow is because there are a lot of things that Tallow can do, but for the purposes of today, Tallow is a talent locator. Um, Tallow is a free profile platform that allows students to build a profile to showcase their talents and skills. Um, Tallow then works with colleges and companies that are interested in engaging and connecting with students to offer them opportunities. That is a short version of what we do, but as we dive into the platform, we're going to talk a little bit more about some of the other things that you could benefit from um, by building a Tallow profile that goes beyond just connecting to opportunities. So, what you see in front of you is one of the pages that we have available for FBLA members to come on and create a free account. Anyone who is 13 years and over can come onto the platform and create a, a free profile. Um, we are FERPA and COPA compliant, um, so that also means that we also protect your personal identifiable information, and we'll talk about that a little bit more. But as you come onto the platform and you build and create your profile, um, you're going to be able to connect to really great opportunities. But where we want you to begin and make sure the very first time that you come onto the platform is that you find your FBLA link that's appropriate for you. So whether you're a middle le level, if you're an FBLA um, member at, at high school level, or if you're a PBL member, we want to make sure that you come in to that space initially. Once you sign on at this initial page, anytime you come in to create your profile, you can then do it from your, your um, your online computer, you can come in and just download tallow.com and sign in, or you can even use the mobile app. So uh, that's also a great place to be able to have that in your hand to get notifications. So with that, we're going to start with a profile. So when you start on that initial page that I shared with you and you go in through that link, we're going to take you through a welcome flow and just ask some general questions to help you get started. And um, those are some questions about the school you attend, um, when you, you graduate, just some basic information, but we want to make sure that when you're building a profile, that you're building a really strong profile that tells everything that you can about. And the reason for that is because the colleges, the companies, and organizations that we work with are searching for talent. So they want to find you in the pipeline, they want to engage and connect with you early, and the more information that you provide helps them to be able to find and reach out to you to connect you to those opportunities. The other part of that, and the reason why it's important, is because we want you to build your professional presence. We want you to be able to brand and market yourself. You're doing some amazing activities with FBLA. There are things that you may also do if you're participating in sports or maybe in your community. You could be with churches and other activities that you're involved in. We want to give you a place where you can start to collect that early. So if you're thinking, well, I'm a freshman or I'm a sophomore, how is this important to me, or I'm in the eighth grade, it's because this is going to give you that place to be able to collect um, that information and have it in one place. So as you continue to do more amazing things and more great things throughout your high school career, you're not going to forget about that thing that you just in eighth grade as it is in 10th and 11th grade. So as you're building your professional presence, this is going to be where you start your branding. So as you come in, you're going to answer those initial questions. We're going to be able to indicate where you are in the pathway. So we're going to know you're a high school student, um, the class, and when you graduate. And then we have just some of that, those basic kind of high-level stats that you see here. Um, you may not have taken a standardized test. Don't worry about that. That's not a problem. Whatever you have here, whatever you showcase about yourself, is really going to be based on your own experience. So if you haven't taken standardized tests, it's okay. There are going to be maybe three boxes there instead of five boxes. But all of these things that you see are really going to be representative of where you are on your pathway. But as you continue to do those things, you're going to come back in and, can, and add those to your profile. We always ask about career interests, and I want to emphasize the importance of um, the information that you put in about your career interests. You don't have to have it all figured out today. 
but there are those who know their general interests and the things that they are um, focused on and they want to do, make sure that you put those career interests uh, onto your profile. If there are some things that you may not be 100% sure about, but you think that it could be something, if you knew more about it that you would be interested in, I highly recommend that you add that career interest. We don't limit you on what you can put here. Um, the importance and the value of that is because those colleges, companies, and organizations that want to connect with you may start with your career interest. And they may say, well, we want to find students that live within 100 miles of Phoenix, Arizona, who are interested in computer science. And then they can also tell you about maybe some early opportunities to engage and connect you with. And so we want to make sure that well, no matter how broad or how narrow, that you um, put as many career interests as you can there um, that may genuinely be of interest to you. So just, we have the languages. Um, so if you are multilingual and you speak other languages, we encourage you to put that there. So this right-hand side of the screen that you see, this is really where the resume information is on your profile. So of course, if you have your education, if you're dual enrolled, we give you an opportunity to share um, information about being dual enrolled. But you also want to list your accomplishments, extracurricular activities and community service, as well as other experiences, including publications. So publications would be anything you've written or maybe been written about. We give you an opportunity to attach that, um, that opportunity or a link that opportunity here. Uh, we have in each of these sections, if you're curious about, I'm not really sure what goes uh, maybe under extracurriculars and community service. We do have a tool here that will guide you and provide more information for you. So if you read the heading under each section, you're going to learn a little bit more about more specifically what should go there. And then you can add that extracurricular activity, including a link um, that maybe that program that you're involved in has a link to a website. You could put that link there as well. Um, we see a lot of students who have some really great, I'm going to have a little caveat here, that have really great profiles um, that come through FBLA that we've seen. We enjoy, and the reader, which would be anyone who views your profile, really likes to see when we see an FBLA badge on your profile, to have that coupled with your experiences and the activities that you do, not only in FBLA, but in the external activities that you're involved in, really adds value to your profile, really strengthens your profile for us to be able to see that coupled with your FBLA badge. So we encourage you, even if you feel like it's really small and maybe I just have a hobby where I um, just walk, maybe you walk the dogs in the neighborhood, maybe a couple people in the neighborhood pay you, or maybe it's just a hobby and something you'd like to do, that you may It may seem like it's small, but it tells the reader a lot more about who you are, how you spend your time, um, and it gives them an opportunity to find a place, another way to engage with you. So that's what you would put in that section. This next section is where we find out what your next steps are. This is important because, again, those college companies and organizations that are searching for you can actually search for you based on what your next step goals are. So you can indicate whether you're interested in going to a two-year or four-year school. Maybe some students are interested in going directly into the military or even directly into the workforce. There are some really great training programs. There are great programs out there that will both pay you while you go to school. Um, so you'll have the opportunity to that. And maybe when you indicate that you're going into the workforce, that also helps those companies identify you as a student who may be a good candidate for those programs. So you'll indicate your next steps. And then you can also share which college you put the status of that application or that interest. So it's already been accepted by admissions or you committed to go to that school. You can indicate that in this section here. And one thing I want to point out that's very important is where you have the ability to share information. The communication on Talo all happens inside of the platform. Those of you who are familiar with Facebook, if you're familiar with um, Instagram and other social media platforms, you don't always have to share your email address in those. All of the communication happens inside of that platform. So we work the same way. So if you receive a message from someone on Tello, a direct message, it could be from an advisor, it could be from a human resources department, it's from a college, um, it's all going to happen inside of Tello. If you select to share your information, that means that you're giving us permission to share your email address with the colleges that are partnered with Talo. So we have to have your permission before we can share that externally and without you opting. 
we'll make sure that they can find you on the platform and connect with you, but all of your communication will happen just inside of Tallow. But if you want to share your email address and receive some different notifications or information from the school separate from Tallow, you can check the box there to give you that option. And then, of course, here you can add your major. So after you've filled out your information about um, your experiences, what your next steps and your goals are and your intended major, you have a section here, of course, where you could add standardized test scores, any relevant courses, and I emphasize relevant because we really want to look at what makes you what stand makes you stand apart. Are there electives that you're taking in school that other students don't traditionally take, or things that are helping to build your future that are help um, helping shape your future that are courses that um, may not be something that other students are taking. We just want to make sure that you highlight those. If you're doing AP courses, those are of value. Um, you don't have to feel the need to put your entire transcript because we give you a place to attach that. So if you have an unofficial copy of your transcript, um, you can attach it in this section. Um, if you have a formal resume, cover letter, letters of recommendation, and other projects that you've done, feel free to put that information and attach it here. Uh, we've seen some really great um, capstone projects here. Again, you see where there's uh, maybe photography, maybe there are some other pictures of you at events that you would like to showcase here. And um, maybe you have a really great letter recommendation. This is the ideal place to put that. One thing that I do want to share in this section is to make sure that whatever you um, attach, if you have a letter recommendation that you may want to put here, be mindful that although Tallow is a closed network, and that means that you won't be able to see other students' profiles, but you are going to be able to communicate directly with colleges, companies, and organizations. So that means there is a reader, like myself, or it could be Human Resources Department, that's going to be able to view your profile. Anything that you put here is what we would somewhat consider your public-facing profile. So if that human resources director or that person wants to hire you from a job for a job is going to be able to view whatever letters of recommendation and material that you attach. So if you have a personal story that um, may be included in a letter of recommendation that you may not want to be asked about in an interview, that maybe it's um, a topic that you're just not really comfortable sharing, just be mindful of that when you attach those things here. Those are great for um, your maybe your college um, entrance applications or if you're writing a, um, an essay for a um, scholarship. That would be a great place to put that. But in this section, this may not be the best place if you have something personal in any of those materials that you don't want to share. Which more also reminds me, if you put your, your um, sure that you black out your personal information because we don't share things like your address, we want to make sure that that's protected. So that's kind of the right-hand side of the screen that I share with you, and that's all that resume, Type of information, but this left-hand side of the screen that you see over here is really where we get into a little bit more of the personality. Um, this is what takes it from being more of a two-dimensional resume to a three-dimensional resume. We often see those general black and white resumes that, of course, give the basic information about you and the work that the things that you've done. But this actually allows you to tell your story in your own words um, through videos. So you can add up to 25 videos here. So those activities that you're doing with FBLA, community service activities, if you're an athlete, this is a great place to put highlights, um, your um, competitions, if there are maybe, maybe you're interested in journalism, this is a great place to maybe show your interview skills. We've also, so the sky is the limit. We want you to make sure that you are demonstrating and showing yourself in the best way, especially if you do things with your hands and maybe you're more of a maker and a builder, uh, this is a great way to showcase that. As we mentioned, uh, FBLA has digital badges. We have a lot of digital badges that are available for you. For those of you who may not understand or have learned or heard about digital badges, digital badges are a lot like a certificate. They can be both an earned credential, so it could be something you had to take a test for and earn, or like in the way of the membership badge, that's a recognition. We're recognizing that you participate in a particular activity. So just like those awards you receive, like BAA awards, that's what you're going to be able to showcase here in this section with your digital badge. So all of the digital badges will tell what you had to do to earn it. So you're going to see the criteria here, a summary of what that badge represents, and then you 
that open badges network. So that's um, one place that you can move your badge from your child profile. If you're searching for badges, you can click, you can see your badges you've earned or go out and actually request a badge. So you can search for the badge by name or once you click on one of these badges, you can actually go out and request the badge. There may be some additional verification questions that they ask you to make sure that that's a badge that you're eligible for. Just make sure that you complete everything accurately because that makes that way the person who's reviewing and looking at your badge can verify that you've completed whatever um, criteria has been asked for that and they can award the badge to you. So last but not least, I want to share a couple other things with you and then we're going to show you a few more benefits. So you're also going to put your career interests, we'll also populate here, and some skills. Make sure if you have a geographic to work with national companies, we would like for you to also share what your geographic preference may be. So if there's a college or a company that's in a particular state, um, then they want to search for you based on your um, interest of where you'd like to live, we could put that there. And then also in this association section, don't forget to put FBLA. Very important. So if they want to, if a company wants to say, I'm looking specifically for FBLA members, they can actually go in and find you when they do that search. So now that you've done the wonderful work of putting a strong profile together, you have a few ways to share it. One thing that you could do is you can export it to a PDF, choose whether or not you want to include your personal information in a profile picture. Once you export that, what it's going to do is take everything that you've done in building your profile and turn it into a resume format PDF for you. So you'll see here, this is all of the information that in our demo student Tina's profile, it's now in a resume with your resume. So you have a printable version of your profile. The other thing you can do to share it is you can create a link. When you create a link, you can actually name the link based on whomever you're sending it to. So if it's to a school, or if you want to name it FBLA, you want to give the name of your advisor, whomever you're sending it to, you can create a special link. You'll see here um, the name Jasper. This was sent to someone named Jasper. When that link is sent to them, you can actually see how many times that person has viewed your, viewed your profile. So you'll see here it says zero links, but here it has two. So you'll see here that this has been actually viewed two times. You can also do that with your digital badges that you've earned. You select the badge. Once you've named that badge, you're going to be able to send just the link for that person to view and open your badge. So you'll see here there are profiles that have been shared, but when you share your badge, this is what it'll look like when you You can always, if you don't want to share anymore, you can always delete um, that link, and that URL will no longer be available for them to view your profile. The other thing you can do, which is also a benefit to uh, our advisors that are on the call, is that you can actually give in someone view-only access to your profile. So if you want to share it with your advisor or with other mentors, you all you need is their email address. When they have your email address, they will receive an invitation. In that invitation, they can will sign up for Talo. This continues to be free for those of you who are advisors on the call. Um, and once you create that account, you can have an unlimited number of students request to share their profile with you, and you'll have a drop-down menu or a drop-down list of those students. So you could go in and select to view their profile at any time. For those of you who are parents, and for those of you who may want to share your profile with a parent or a guardian, we also so this means that any time you have received an email from a college or company or anyone on Talo, they're also going to receive a copy of it. So they'll be able to see it as well. And that helps to have a second set of eyes. Sometimes things slip through the cracks and we can miss it. And that's just to make sure that um, you have a second set of eyes on there uh, to help keep things moving forward. So those are the ways that you can share your profile. So once you built your profile, you choose how you want to share it, you will receive your personal, a personalized dashboard. So it's going to let you know how much progress you've made with completing your profile. This envelope here is going to allow you to view the message that you've received on Talo. You will also receive a copy of that in your inbox. So whichever email you choose to sign up for Talo, that you use to sign up for Talo, I apologize, you will also receive a copy in your inbox. 
So that doesn't mean that CVS Health is emailing you in that box. It's just a copy so that you know that um, an email is waiting for you on Talo. You'll also receive a notification on the mobile app as well um, that you have a message from Talo. So be mindful that you can receive those. When you sign up, one thing I didn't mention earlier is because you can keep this profile when you move on to college and into your career, make sure that you use an email address that you tend to keep. So sometimes schools will give an email address, but I just wanted to um, emphasize it's probably best to use a personal email address so that you can continue to update your profile and keep that with you after you've moved on from middle school or high school, or if you move outside of that district. So of course here, you can view your profile. If you just want to get to the categories quickly, if you click the pencil here, you're going to see all of the different um, profiles. So if you wanted to come in here and add FBLA as an association, you have a place where you can come in and type the name of FBLA in and add that to your profile. Some tips and tools that we provide here, you'll see if you take a standardized test scores, we tell you more about that. There's some other tools and resources that can help you with testing and sharpening your skills. If you, once you put your career interest, we also recommend majors based on your career interest. So earlier I mentioned that you may not know specifically what you're interested in, but you maybe just want to put that career interest on there because it could be something you're interested in, but you need to know a little bit more. You can learn more about those majors here. A couple of my favorite parts, and one of the things I think is one of the um, greatest benefits that we have on here for those of you um, who may be looking for scholarship dollars, we have a couple places where we do this, but the most important place here in the center is to make sure you link your account. This continues to be free. And what happens is when you link your account to RedKite, it pulls the information over to RedKite and filters through $20 billion in financial aid and scholarships and lets you know what you meet your criteria for. So you can go out and view your matches. So you'll see here this profile. She has over $300,000 in scholarships and grants that she's eligible for based on her profile and the information that it's pulled so far. She can actually link directly to those scholarship opportunities. Or if you go one step further with RedKite, you can get some tips and tools on financial aid, on um, what the difference between a loan is um, and a scholarship. So you can get um, guides on here, but you're gonna find these actual scholarships. You can add more information into these fields so some information will pull over. Some things we don't ask, like we don't ask about your marital status or the military. There may be additional clubs and organizations, or we don't ask about disabilities. So you may want to enter that in there to find if there are more opportunities and scholarships available for you. You can then flag those. So if you've applied and you want to bookmark them because you want to come back in and apply for them, you could do that. Or you can click directly on the application and you would go in and and complete the application. So I want to also share with you when you go through that, this portion is that on RedKite, there's, these things are constantly updating. So if a scholarship expired um, September 30th, you won't be able to see that scholarship opportunity on there today because it's October 9th. But if something opened up um, on October 1st, those new scholarships are now on there until they expire. But after the scholarships expire, they rotate off, so you'll want to come on often to um, search for scholarships. It is not just for students, or when I say students, it's not just for high school seniors. If you are an underclassman, if you're already in college, or if you're looking to go back to school, there's a large variety of scholarships there. So I want to emphasize that. Last but not least, you'll see some organizations that we partner with. You're going to see those here. You can actually go out and learn more about those organizations or those companies. We actually have a way for you to search for those, but they also build a profile. So you can watch videos, find out a little bit more about the opportunities and how they um, can reach out to you about those opportunities, or in turn, if you wanted to reach out to them. If there are events coming up, you're going to see those posted here. And then we're going to talk last but not least about opportunities. So this is an important section that you also use as well. There are a couple places to get there. You can get there either through clicking this button here or at the top of the page. It takes you to the same place. So this is where you can actually search for opportunities. 
So if you're looking for an opportunity that's going to be posted on here and maybe it's a scholarship, internship, um, other events that we have that are posted that could be um, from our partners or in some communities that we work in, you can actually go in and search for those. I'm on the demo side, so I gotta pull the ones that are live, but it just gives you an opportunity to see what's here and available for you to search for. Now, mind you, there are opportunities that you can search for, but there are also gonna be opportunities that you cannot see. Those may be the ones that um, a college or company has a very specific criteria, and they're gonna use the search filter and the information that individuals have entered about themselves to be able to find those specific students, and they'll reach out directly to you for those opportunities. So those come in two, in two different ways. So just in wrapping this piece of it up, I wanted to make sure that you know where those scholarships live. Always be on the lookout for Tallow scholarships. We usually offer about $1,000 a month, um, a scholarship, a $1,000 scholarship once a month. We also have giveaways on our um, Instagram page, so be sure to check and follow us um, at Tallow on Instagram. And you could maybe win Air, um, AirPods. We have speaker systems that we put on there. There are other small scholarships that we may post just by answering a few questions to help make our platform even stronger. So definitely check us out on those social media sites if you have them. Last couple of things I want to show before turning this back over is um, there are places where you'll receive notifications. So you may see a, a notification that there's an organization that may be following you because they saw your profile and they see that um, you have some common interests or maybe they have a scholarship coming up and they want to flag you because they're going to reach out to you in the future. Or if you have new messages, they're going to appear here. If you apply for anything using your Tallow profile, or maybe a scholarship or another opportunity, you can monitor or track what you by going, clicking under your profile picture and going to the My Opportunities tab. When you click there, you're going to see the opportunities that you've applied for. So if you've submitted that application, it's going to appear here. Or if it's still in progress and it hasn't been submitted, you're going to also see that indicated. So this is a great way to keep track of the things that you have applied for that are available to you on Talo. So I want to make sure that you have a chance to see that. So with that, um, I'm going to look in the comment section just to see if anyone has any questions before um, I move on from here. But um, once I look through these questions, it looks like they're getting answered in the while I've been giving the presentation. So I appreciate that. But if there are any other questions that um, pop in there, we'll go through and I'll um, make sure that we get those questions answered. And um, with that, then I would just turn this back over to Lisa. Thank you all for your time. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Chanel. We really appreciate all of the great knowledge that you shared with us. So um, I, we have a couple of resources here that um, you can come, if you're going to the FBLA middle level, if you're middle level, there's the link to Tallow, the FBLA link and the PBL link. At any time, if you have questions about Tallow in general, please feel free to contact Chanel. Um, if you have questions about the programs portion of it and how it's implemented into the program, please contact me. I do see we had a couple questions concerning the program. So let me take a few seconds to answer that. Somebody's asking, will more digital badges be available? For example, maybe the CSA Individual Membership Awards? That's a really good question. And possibly in the future, we always take suggestions. So make sure you email membershipdir at fbla.org. We did add some new badges this year. We added the stock market game for all divisions. We added the membership madness and membership mania for FBLA. So we're always looking for ideas and we're always looking to expand our program. Another question is asking, hi, is this webinar being recorded? Um, again, that's a really good question. And yes, we are recording this webinar and it will be available. We'll send it out to everybody that registered and we will actually post it on the homepage of our website. Another question being asked is, will certification and Microsoft badges be added? Wow, that's a really great idea and something that we didn't think about. And we're gonna take that back to our people and we're going to discuss that 
and take a look at it. But that's a great idea. We always like to get into more of those things that not only can advisors implement into their classroom, but actually will be an advantage for students as well. Because I know, do know in a lot of high schools, they are requiring the Microsoft certification for graduation. So um, thank you again today, this afternoon for attending this webinar. It's been great. I really, really encourage you all, whether you're a teacher, this is a great tool to integrate into your classes or you're a student. It's a great resource to start building your online profile. You don't have to participate in the programs to actually start building your profile. There's member badges that are available just for members. Um, if you do want to start building your profile through our programs, we kind of have a step-by-step -step process at every level that helps you build and expand your profile. So on behalf of Chanel and myself, we look forward to working with you this year and have a very nice evening.